You're gonna need a bigger boat. Although the movie Star Wars The Empire Strikes Back is legendary by itself, it also happens to feature one of the most memorable movie lines to date. I love you. I know. Carrie Fisher was annoyed that Harrison Ford changed the scene without her input, but the director liked it so much that he kept it in the final cut. I love you. I know. When the Godfather is nearly killed in a hit, one of his lieutenants is charged with the task of taking out one of the underlings responsible, but not before he picks up cannoli on the way there. Leave the gun. Take the cannoli. This line wasn't in the script. It was pure improvisation by Richard Castellano. Having tried cannoli for the first time today, I can see why they would leave the gun and take the cannoli. Leave the gun. Take the cannoli. Much of what Dr. House said on House was either scathing or sarcastic. Hugh Laurie understood the character so completely that he was able to improvise a line he said to Wilson. There is a code, bros before hoes, man. While Hugh Laurie has been known to ad-lib some of his lines, this one came out of nowhere and you can see Robert Sean Leonard's smile is 100% genuine. Bros before hoes, man. You know that iconic sound Anthony Hopkins made while talking about eating a liver to Jodie Foster? Well, turns out it wasn't even in the original script. Apparently, it was something Hopkins did during rehearsals to creep out Foster, and the director thought it was so freaky they decided to keep it in to spook the audience, too. You fly back to school now, little starting. How tall are you, Private? Five foot nine, sir! Five foot nine! I didn't know they stacked shit that high! Former U.S. Marine Sergeant R. Lee Ermey pretty much ad-libbed his entire dialogue in Full Metal Jacket. He had the freedom to come up with all those profane insults to the cadets during the military training scenes. Because he wasn't stuck to the script, he could just go with his gut and make his character way more believable. Sir! Sir what? Are you about to call me an asshole? In Guardians of the Galaxy, during the criminal's arrest and lineup, Star-Lord cranking up his finger was completely improvised by Chris Pratt. Director James Gunn then told him to add an apology at the end, and the hilarious scene was born. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know how this machine worked. This entire shot from Animal House was improvised by John Belushi. When he began piling food on his tray, director John Landis urged the camera operator to stay with him. He also improvised this infamous line. I'm a zit. Get it? I know this line might be a little bit gross and immature, but that's exactly what made John Belushi's character so darn lovable. I'm a zit. Get it? Did you know Jeffrey Arend ad-libbed this now iconic line in The Ringer? It's probably one of my favorite scenes from the movie, and Johnny Knoxville trying so hard not to laugh makes it even funnier. You stopped off for ice cream. When the fuck did we get ice cream? Gene Wilder was a brilliant improviser, and this moment in Blazing Saddles showed how creative he could be. When Cleveland Little discovers that the townspeople are just as racist to him even though he's now law enforcement, Wilder consoles him with a little humor. You have gotta remember that these are just simple farmers. You know, morons. <laughs> you can even see Little look at the crew wondering if his laugh ruined the shot. It actually made the scene perfect. You know, morons. <laughs> when it comes to Arthur Weasley, no one could have played him better than the incredible Mark Williams. However, it's hard to believe that his iconic line wasn't actually part of the script. Tell me, what exactly is the function of a rubber duck. In each new take, he would ask an even odder question. But in the end, the rubber duck question is what was kept in the film. What exactly is the function of a rubber duck? Did you know that the Breaking Bad reference in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. was improvised by Ian DeCastecker? He decided to add in the classic Jesse Pinkman catchphrase. What does he do? Science, biatch. DeCastecker's co-star, Clark Gregg, went to social media after and declared that the line was the best ad-lib there has ever been in the history of television. We agree, Clark. We agree. Science, biatch. The now classic line in Dazed and Confused that properly introduced the world to Matthew McConaughey was an ad-lib by the actor himself. All right, all right, all right. Fun fact, he actually improvised this scene and was only supposed to have three parts in the movie, but was given more since he did such a good job with the character. All right. All right, all right. How you doing? Do you remember that famous necklace scene in Pretty Woman? Turns out it wasn't even in the script. Richard Gere, being the spontaneous guy he is, decided to snap the necklace case shut on Julia Roberts' hand on a whim. Oh! 
Her reaction was so genuine and full of laughter that the directors just had to keep it in the movie. Oh! <laughs> in Thor The Dark World, when Thor decided to hang his magical hammer on a coat rack, that was actually a move Chris Hemsworth did goofing around in between takes. The rest of the cast and crew thought that it was hilarious, and the moment was put into the final film. Goodwill Hunting remains one of the most memorable and well-loved movies. Robin Williams ad-libbed a ton of moments on set. One of the most iconic lines in the entire film belongs to Williams, which left Matt Damon and everyone else on the set totally shocked. If the professor calls about that job, just tell him, sorry, I had to go see about a girl. Son of a bitch, he stole my life. In Raiders of the Lost Ark, there's this scene where Indy's supposed to have a big sword fight. Well, turns out Harrison Ford wasn't up for too many takes. Word is he was getting a bit tired of the whole sword fighting thing, so he pulls out his gun and shoots the dude instead. All the deaths in Avengers Infinity War are shocking and heartbreaking in their own way, but none are quite as sad as Spider-Man's. I don't want to go. I don't want to go. Sir, please. Please, I don't want to go. This scene was improvised by Tom Holland at the director's request. Holland's performance is truly masterful, and this moment remains one of the most tragic in the MCU, even if Peter later comes back to life. Sir, please. Please, I don't want to go. I don't want to go. Many improvised moments are brought about because the actor wants to make the scene funnier, but sometimes it's just because someone straight up forgot their lines. That's what happened to Tom Felton in Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. Felton completely forgot what he was supposed to say and threw out this hilarious line. Why are you wearing glasses? Um, reading. I didn't know you could read. Chitty bang bang, chitty chitty bang bang, loves us too. Hi. One of the most memorable scenes in When Nature Calls occurs, when Ace Ventura begins randomly singing the theme song to Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, while en route to the consulate for the first time. Chitty Bang Bang, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, Chitty Bang Bang, yeah! This scene was a result of Carrie completely forgetting his lines for the day, and began ad-libbing the musical theme on the spot. Since both actors in the scene remained in character without laughing, the director loved the scene so much that he kept it in the final cut. Chitty! Dead to Me only lasted for three seasons, but each was rife with wild drama, unforeseen plot twists, and some hilarious improvisation. Most of the script was written, but Linda Cardellini and Christina Applegate did have the opportunity to take some creative liberties. Like when Cardellini improvised this line, You have to put down the pipe. By the pipe you mean his penis. Yes, right? I mean his penis, of course, obviously. It's so hard for me to put that down. The cast of The 40-Year-Old Virgin is packed with talented comedians. So it comes to no surprise that the, you know how I know you're gay, dialogue was 30 seconds of complete comedic improvising. You know I know you're gay? You just told me you're not sleeping with women anymore. You know how I know that you're gay? How? Because you're gay and you can tell who other gay people are? The scene was originally supposed to end quickly, but the two actors kept on rolling with hilarious punchlines. It was also the longest improv scene that made it into the final cut. You know how I know that you're gay? Oh. You have a rainbow bumper sticker on your car that says, I love it when balls are in my face. 